So once again, we're back from very, very long times to Outer Wilds. What? Wait, who show is this? Let me intro. Hey guys, oh. I'm Larson the Wolf here, and I'm joined with Simple Fox. Uh, finally, back from the dead. What's up? Okay, well, now go ahead, guy. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, <laughs> you finally got back from Texas and told me to play Outer Wilds, which... Are we going to do the TLDR? Nope. Oh, you remember TLDR one out of ten? How much? How many do you give it? Um, five, six. Damn. It. I, I do a seven point five or eight. So I've had an argument with a friend on I'm, a game. A ten out of ten should not be a well, thing. But okay. Um. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess. Um. That's a different conversation entirely. My bigger question is the fact that did you fin finish it? Yes. I will admit, though, that I had to look up the ending. How to get the ending. I will admit I had to, too. The game... I think we need to skip uh, over quick, everything let, let, other than the story and then get into the story. I was about to say, let's let's skip the spoilers, just do the overview and talk about the general aesthetics of it. Did you like the uh, hillbilly... I was Hulky, trying to figure bluegrass out. Feel. I wanted to figure out because it has that. Yes, it's a weird. They have kind of. I wouldn't call it hillbilly, but it feels like a primitive society that somehow has space travel. And I was trying to find a word for it, and the only thing I think of was it fits the term two by four technology, because it's they have spaceships made out of two by fours and just basic glass and whatnot, and yet it is legitimate space travel to that. Mm -hmm. it, I like the aesthetic. I I want to say I like the music, but you hear the music a lot. But and it started to grate against me. Okay, so good music, but it bum, and it bum, 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 I mean, it had bum. a good atmospheric or explorer type thing, but there were several times skipping over spoilers at the moment like when it would crescendo when you're running towards the big finale where it kept blaring this dramatic oh you're running to the final we're going on the we're almost there except I kept dying I kept dying on the final bit so it kept every single time when I started the rush to the end and the fucking horns and trumpets blowing on me just pissed me off yeah I had the same experience and there, there's a they, they use the music for social cues or for um, um, game cues, right? So yeah. there's the standard music you hear once you wake up at the campfire in the very beginning. Um, and the, it's, it's, I think it's a guy playing on a banjo, right? Yep, the banjo. Um, or a guitar, I can't remember. Banjo. But you hear it at the very beginning, and uh, as you get on the spacecraft and fly out, you'll hear that again, and that's the marker that there are fellow space travelers of your species out in near the, where you're yeah. at. I yeah. do like how the way you find other astronauts is in the world, you essentially listen for the songs that they're playing on different instruments, and it does give a good explorer-like feel, but something that weirded me out with the gameplay, I do like the gameplay is just simplistic exploration. You don't unlock any more abilities, nothing fancy, you just do you are just an explorer. And you have 20 minutes to explore the universe, this ever-changing universe of different planets that do all sorts of interesting things. And at the end of 20 minutes, the universe resets. Quick question. How many times did you make it to the end of the universe resetting? How many times did I make it to the what setting? And essentially, if you... The universe explode, you start, you wake up, up every mission, mission next mm -hmm. to that campfire, and then you can explore the universe for 22 minutes. At the end of 22 minutes, the universe essentially goes supernova and explodes. Mm -hmm. Right. How many times did you die to the supernova? Uh, several. Well, a majority of the time. I would say about 70% of the time. I guess If so. I didn't just commit suicide. Well, that was my problem, because I probably died 30, 40 times. And I've only... Well, I, I died a lot. When I, mean, when I say I commit suicide, I didn't mean I tripped and fell and died somewhere or died accidentally. I mean, I literally forced myself to die so I could start the loop again. Or I meditated until the end. I never meditated to the end. It was... I had a bad habit. 
you can die a lot of ways in this game. Like punctures the suit, running into shit. A lot of ways. Really? And I only died to reset maybe four times. And usually really? you can uh, you can only really die three ways, as near as I can tell. You can suffocate, you can be damaged from fall damage and whatnot, occur damage. Or you can um uh fall into an immediate death thing, like going in straight into the sun. Yeah, I as did near that as I can a lot. Tell, that's the or going into ghost matter. I did that a lot too, because I the ghost matter warning warning for the invisible matter. It, every single time it was there's ghost matter here, you're dead. Because I had forward momentum going, and the warning was not quick enough. Mm. Well, they're always around the crystals, so every time I saw crystals, I just popped out my camera and figured out where the ghost matter was and went around. I did not do that enough. I didn't realize that till later on. Oh, did you go to the main camp beforehand and they talked about ghost matter and, like, all the tutorial stuff and uh, Timber Hearth? Yes, unfortunately, a lot of that dialogue was useless. I mean, they talk about ghost matter and how it was around and you need to take a picture to see it. I mean, I eventually figured that out, yes. I still died a hell of a lot in that game. And that was actually one of the things that irritated with me. No, I mean, it, they tell you that directly through a plaque at Timber Hearth. I may have missed that black then. Okay. Well, that, that's probably why. Certainly doesn't help, though, yes. No, this, yeah. I would also say, though, to that end, I'm used, I like games with a looping mechanic, but this one... <sighs> yeah, yes, that's my biggest gripe. I'll let me get on my soapbox here. Is the looping mechanic through this was super annoying, especially in an exploration information-based game like this. Whereas the award for exploring is finding more about about this ancient alien species that seemingly has gone extinct before you were able to travel the universe or the solar system rather. Mm -hmm. And every time, so you would have segments where you're just reading stuff. But the problem is, is while you're reading stuff, that clock is counting down. So I felt super urged in order to slow to, or hurry up and read and get all the information finished before the sun would explode. If I was feeling the tight, I would just scan all the information and then read the updates in my ship because I don't have time. I need to explore farther and farther. Right. That's that, that that's a serious problem, I think, with the game. I felt like um, there needed to be a mechanic where if you go up to a wall or a recorder, it almost goes into a freeze frame where you're able to slowly read all the information. It does absent pause. From... If you notice, the game I... does a weird pause thing. Yeah, but the thing is, it's weird. I'm talking about like a completely UI where you go up here, click, okay, now we can read this. You can get through it all. Once you get and... into the temple, the time stops. Not right. every paragraph, it stops at every paragraph, or in this right. case, sentences. Correct. That, that That's my biggest thing. And there's also not, because of the mechanic. So basically what's happened is you interact with a statue in the very beginning, right? We're not doing spoilers here. You get this no. in the very first Ten minutes. 30 minutes of the game even. Um, and then once the universe explodes, you see that statue again. You go through its head and then you suddenly wake up where you started the game to begin with. You continue this loop for the entire game until you beat it. Um, and the only thing that you keep is the information on your ship, which is not really explained why. Nope. It's not explained why you keep that. I think it is implied that the crystals are quantum-based, and your ship is powered by a crystal, so all the stuff is kept on there. But um, that's as near as I can tell. Um, the other thing is, is uh, uh, once you go back to and do this loop... Um, there's no, like, when you're talking about a loop mechanic, a time-based mechanic, the best example of that I always thought was Majora's Mask, which did a really good job of um, a linear game design. So basically there would be sections, long sections you would go through, and then you would find a ladder or something to drop, and when the time loop goes over again, you're able to bypass the entire thing. Whereas the closest thing you get to that is you find the fastest routes to get to certain things in Outer Wilds. And that's just not nearly as satisfying and it can be irritating where if you're like trying to find in the Undercity, you're trying to find a certain area that's immediately below you have to get right to because the um, sand is filling up. And yeah. then there's another segment afterwards that fills up 
and you have to sit there and wait for the sand to go all the way up, and it's like a yeah. five to six minute second. The two that, uh, orbiting planets, the one that is full of sand that slowly drains, and the other planet starts to fill it up. So yeah. if you're trying to explore the one planet that is being filled up with sand, you're on a time limit, and so you got to get in quickly and then get out so you don't get covered and die in there while the other planets you can get to the sand planet as early as you want but it's losing the sand so you have to wait you have to sit there and wait for the sand to go down and there's no way to control the mechanic in order to speed up time either which is another well there's a you can sleep at beds but Uh it i don't Unless you kind of have a guide, it's hard to gauge how long you have to sleep to get to a certain point. And again, you only have 22 minutes, so sleeping at any point feels like a waste because you only have 22 minutes in this time. What do I need to be... Like, it, it's a nice game to... A nice universe to explore, but when you actually, like... You get a lead. Go explore this city. There's something over here. When you try to focus in on a topic... You get slowed down. You have to wait for something in the universe to happen. Happen. You have to do this. This. Mm-hmm. Like, did you get into um, the there's core of... of Deep Giant or of the Water yeah. Planet? Well, there, there, there's a lot of um, um, what's it called? Um, important. Um, it, well, the game wants you to be anal. It wants you to be go over everything with a fine tooth comb. Sometimes there's a data log or a triangle piece that'll have information on it tucked away in a corner somewhere and it wants you to look around the corner that's all well and good but i'm on a time crunch i don't have time to go through the entire bit of the hanging city looking in every little house yes i need to explore everything before the city falls into the freaking black hole right and every single time i'm going through this city i'm like i'm asking myself have i been here before i'm pretty sure i've been here before that is something that upset me that they don't like, even if you've read the wall already, in the next loop, it doesn't signify that you've read it before. Right. So you have to go back to it again and again and again. Well, you, if you can remember it, you're fine. But if you give up on an area for a while and then come back to it, you're like, wait, what am I supposed to be doing with this? What have I read? What haven't I read? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of basic quality of life stuff that should have been in the game that just wasn't there. I think I would be happy if I could get a 10 minute rewind and every now and then or sands of time live system. Because again, I guess I'm just clumsy because I died a n- God knows how many times to getting engulfed in the sun, punctured suit, stabbed, falling. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Mm hmm. Well, and then just another gripe that I had, there's a few instances in which you can, the game defines it as dies. So you get swallowed up by the sun or the angler fish. There's like, yeah, angler fish with the little lights. If they eat you, if you normally survive to the end of the loop or die to impact and it's won't die to oxygen deprivation, you get the little cutscene of the aliens heads looking at you and it kind of shows you where you went and rewinds it but if you die or killed it sends you back to the main menu screen which was pissing me off because then i would have to load up the game and sit and wait and go come on i've got things to do really yes it kept kicking me i didn't have that experience if you get a you dead you died Uh, oh well that is if you get a you died well wait hold okay let's i i think Real quick, before we get into that, we'll we'll d- dive deeper into that. But uh, I have some questions to ask you, but there'll be spoilers. Um, Should we just go into the spoiler section? There's not much we review. No, gameplay no, and music, the, there's not much else. Well, yeah, it's no, a we need to talk about a nice universe. Just yeah, well, yeah, but we didn't really talk about the individual planets, which I think have a fair enough variation that I think we should praise it for, right? I mean. I think uh, Timber Hearth was kind of a cool I- idea, right? With the whole, your home planet's basically a big old campfire. Campfire right? forest. Yeah, a campfire forest. It's basically a Boy Scout camp. Mm-hmm. And uh, you zoom out and there's the moon. And I mean, there's not much on the moon. There's just a guy in a cabin. A guy in a um, cabin. He does the whistling. Right. But then you got Giant's Deep, which is basically a giant cyclone, very... Water world. Uh, active water world with cyclones all over world pools underground and electric core yep and then the, very... they'll throw you into space every... and right about here guys audio cut off so 
Apologies guys, normally we do this entire thing IRL when we just use one single shotgun mic in order to record, uh, but being that it's harder to get together nowadays, we decided to do this over Discord and just have Guy record his audio. But uh, Guy's not necessarily used to recording his audio and he didn't look, apparently somewhere along the line the audio stopped recording and uh, we lost a whole section of it, so I'm going to summarize real quick what we said. Basically, we were just talking about that generally we like the design of the different planets we went to um, and the way that each and every single one of them had some kind of weird or interesting gimmick. Um, and we said that was probably one of the better parts of the game. Uh, honestly, I'm not going to summarize all the planets. Uh, if everything goes accordingly, you should have been watching them uh, as this video goes on. So, uh, The other thing is Guy didn't like the use of the word quantum in the game, such as the quantum moon, because he thinks it's physics-wise it's inaccurate, which it is. My rebuttal, rather, to it was, yeah, it's a little weird to pick that out about the numerous other things that don't make sense in the game. The game wasn't really going for scientific realism, they were just using quantum as just kind of a general cool word. And then we started talking about the end of the game. Um, that's the one thing I think uh, I do need to say is here from this point on, uh, it's going to be a spoiler heavy review, so if this is a game you seem like you're interested in, you should stop listening now. Uh, we'll pick up from there, we are talking about the ending of the game and that the uh, sand planet is the teleportion point and for the longest time I didn't understand that the different teleportion points were supposed to represent different planets and there were various design choices I thought that were um, not explained very well. Like for instance, to get to the end of the game, you have to jump into a black hole right as the sand column goes overhead and neither guy or I could figure it out and we never saw any kind of uh, uh, signifier that that would be the case. Oh, also, Guy died a lot in the game apparently, and not by the sun exploding. I said majority of my deaths were from the, the time loop, rather, uh, where Guy said he died more often than not. Uh, Guy also apparently, we both had to look up the game, uh, part of it was the fact that I was rushing to finish this game in order to do the review. Uh, I had to look up three times what to do. I believe the first time was the teleportation I've already talked about. The second time was how to get into the quantum moon because uh, it didn't seem intuitive to me that you would have to take a picture of the quantum moon to get into it since you are already observing the moon when you're going into its atmosphere. Therefore, the rule should still apply it stayed there. So it never occurred to me that I needed to take a picture. I felt that was cheating in the game a bit. Um, so I had to look up the quantum moon. And then I had to look up the coordinates at the uh, spaceship in order to go to the uh, end of the game. Uh, because I didn't want to spend any more time with it and I was on a crunch, honestly. Also, I mentioned it, I thought it was a pretty good touch that you get a you died screen instead of looping back once you take the core out of the uh, project, meaning that you wouldn't go back in time in a loop anymore. So that was a nice canonical touch the game added. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's the majority of what was missed here in the 15 minutes guy wasn't recording. I'm just going to cut it out entirely, and then we'll continue on the review from here. Thanks for being patient. Uh... I, I just like the use of the word quantum because that's not what quantum is. Special relativity is the thing that kind of relates to time. No travel. one cares. No one cares. Quantum is just that. No one cares. On technicality, the thing that no is, is both cares. there and not there, but no. It's no one cares. It, it was just a mechanic they threw in there to make it seem more cool and stuff. The idea of a vanishing moon when you're not observing it is kind of cool. Kind of. That's 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 it. That's all they were worried about. Yes. I, I'm not going to dock points to it, because it very clearly wasn't supposed to be a highly scientific science fiction yeah. game. So, um, yeah, what do you think about the ending? Like, that's the problem I had with this game. Like, I got down, I was ready for this game, and I was like, oh, cool, it's a planet exploratory game. I knew it had high marks by a lot of critics, so I was excited about it, um, I sat down, I kind of like, I love, as I said in the beginning, this folk and like, bluegrassy music, so. It does have a unique was theme, and you gotta give it the theme. Well, the thing is, is like, I started that all out, and I thought it was just gonna be a cozy, chill game, but it very much isn't. No. <laughs> it's kind of stressful and sad and a little depressing. <laughs> and also convoluted towards the end, I have no clue what just happened. I didn't want to throw my hat in, 
card in that hat, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure what was happening at the end and why the music what? was saving the universe. I'm not sure what yeah, was I don't... happening there. Yeah, I don't know. Um, why did it I bring think, the astronauts, I think... not everybody else in your original home? Oh, I think it was just... I don't think they were actual people. I think they were... Con okay, so the the end of the game, right? You get up to the moon, you jump into the eye, and it's like scary, right? That's the other thing. It's like towards the end there, it gets surreal and like the whole black hole shit, and you're like falling into Feelings like a nothingness abyss. Space yeah, I was like, what, what? I thought this was a cozy, fun game I play with my friends about friendship and making music. What the fuck is this? In a light exploration. Ex right. What what is happening? Um, and you start. It just turns into this surreal thing, and you get a bunch of friends. You all start playing a music, and then it forms up a ball, and you get to the eye of the universe, which apparently was there before the universe even began, and you jump into the hole. So as near as I can... And then it, it fades to black, credits roll, and then it goes into a similar intro to the original one, except the campfire species sitting around are bugs this time. Okay, yeah. Um, um, so as near as I understand it, uh, the old species and your species, your son's dying, right? And it goes into a supernova and that's what kills you and starts the 22 minute loop. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're at the tail end of entropy as far as I can tell. And the universe is ending completely. So when you were dying and you went into this uh, space and you landed uh, into a black nothingness and then you just saw a bunch of stars in a forest... Yeah. You sat, You landed in the forest and you were walking around, but slowly the forest was Going disappearing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what was happening there was since you were the entity in order to meet with the Eye of the Universe, you had to convince the Eye of the Universe to restart the universe again as we went into entropy. So I believe that's what's happening there at the very end. There is it's creating creating constructs of all the friends you had along the way, and including the one alien species that was apparently still alive. It was implied he was stuck in a loop with the rest of you. I'm not sure if you picked that up. Not quite, no. So there were two, three people stuck in a time loop, right? The one guy that was on uh, the um, the water planet, um, deep the water planet. There was you, of course, and then there was always a third statue head. Mm -hmm. And when you finally meet the guy at the quantum moon, he's just kind of shrugs. He's like, I don't, I think I'm dead. I'm not really sure. It was, I, I thought it was pretty implied that he was the third person that was uh, stuck in a time loop. Yeah. Which is why he was still alive of his species. Anyway. Um, so at the very end there, you're playing music together. You jump into the... Uh, Sphere in the middle, uh, and then you see an explosion of stars out and credits roll, I believe, right? Yeah. That's what happens. You restart the right. universe. So, right, so it's a supernova. I think that's what's happening. I still don't know what the uni what the eye of the universe was doing. Uh, apparently, it was calling out to the race before you that went extinct. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really explained why, other than maybe it's sentient. I don't really know. Seems to be. But there's there's a lot of questions that not finished, and that's the only I think the problem when we get into these really far out there uh, sci-fi's is like any explanation almost is unsatisfying. Once you get down deep into it, but you we can at least make the agreement. This is a very philosophical, strong discussion for a game that was just supposed to be about tootling around. Yeah, no, that's my biggest complaint with it. Is like it's such a massive tonal change from the rest of the, the game. Story and, to it, and it's hard to make and you can have massive tonal you can have great tonal changes, um, in video games provided enough time and then the uh segments in order to transition you into there. A good example of that is um Borderlands two did a really good job of transitioning you from a really funny dorky game into oh shit, now you're really sad. And it didn't feel out of place necessarily. Whereas this one, when you're stuck in a 22 minute loop, it's really hard to go from do 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 to dum dum da 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 like the whole the time, like you were saying before, the really loud, exciting time. Yeah, once you essentially uh, music. take out the um, warp, warp the thing that's yeah. time, 
and it just blares music in you, which it kept doing that, but I kept dying to the anglerfish in that case, so it was just irritating. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Um, and I did like the touch that they use the universe's ending song, except it was more uh, orchestraic. There was louder and more uh, instruments playing. I like the idea of that. But I agree with you. It was like it's being played so loud, especially in the anglerfish segment, which is you kind of need your hearing. A little bit, because you can kind of get a cue whether or not the things hear you. Yeah. Which is very much so necessary. Hmm. But I, I, I think a lot of the create it makes up for it with a lot of the creativity, and I think it, the story overall was pretty interesting. I mean, I was I was entertained with it. I always felt like I was discovering something new and something new. I was on to something exciting. I think they did a good job of that. Yeah. So it's unique. It just has that tonal clash of this story is trying to be somewhat grandiose and somewhat depressing, but it's not. The gameplay is just fun and adventurous. Right. So, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. It was that that's the biggest complaint i had about it is like just coming together the tones just didn't didn't mesh very well uh i'm not sure if there's anything else i have to say about this the game nope i think we can call that a wrap all right well thanks for joining me guy all right not problems bye-bye